Welcome to Worldview Matters, discussing controversial issues, discerning current events, defending biblical Christianity. No topic off limits. And now, here's your host, David Fiorazzo. Hello, friends and family in Christ. Thank you so much for tuning in and sharing Worldview Matters. God bless you. I have a few people to thank before we get to our guest today, Steve Cleary with Revelation Media and iBible. Um, we recently wrapped up our fundraiser. That was last week. And we want to thank Wendy from Utica, Michigan, and Tammy from Green Bay, Wisconsin. Also, Andrea from Alberta, Canada. So thank you guys, plus Joe from Green Bay. Gosh, uh, you guys have been a blessing. Thank you for keeping us going and we will just I will just want to acknowledge every uh, person that uh, sends in a donation because we couldn't do this without you so thank you so much great topic today and you're gonna love this especially if you're um, love the gospel and evangelism uh, Steve Cleary is the founder and direct executive director of Revelation Media. It's a 501c3 ministry dedicated to providing biblically based content to the next generation and to the global missions community. Revelation Media began operations in early 2016, and it's best known for its release of the animated feature film The Pilgrim's Progress and for I Bible, a first ever. 280 episode animated presentation of the entire biblical narrative translated into over 7,500 living languages. Steve's ministry career began with Voice of the Martyrs uh, back in 1990. We'll talk to him a little bit about that and his transition. He has overseen and co-written book and film projects. Uh, films include The Pilgrim's C Progress, Tortured for Christ, the movie, and a series of short films for the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. So we're just so thankful. Steve Cleary, we appreciate your time, brother. Good to see you. Welcome to Worldview Matters. Thanks, David. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, good to talk about uh, Revelation Media and I Bible. But before we do that, we have connections with uh, Voice of the Martyrs. Uh, I have friends there. I've had Todd Nettleton on the show. Matt Rose is a good friend of mine. And you worked there for a number of years. Tell us about your involvement there and uh, just how that went and then your transition now. I, I Yeah, I started with Voice of the Martyrs in 1990. Um, when they relaunched as verse, uh, Voice of the Martyrs, I was actually the first employee that the executive director hired. I spent five years on staff, and I spent 25 years as a senior consultant, and wow. now I still work with them in ministry projects, and I still oversee some marketing for them. Um, actually, I was just there last week <laughs> and uh, got to be on Todd, Todd Nettleton's radio show. It was a, a huge honor and a privilege. Uh, it's just a great ministry. Yeah, what a blessing. So uh, Todd's been on here many times. Now, did you talk about iBible? I did. Yeah, okay. he asked, you know, Todd, uh, we go back so far. Uh, <laughs> I actually helped him start VOM Radio like 10 years ago or longer. Wow. Um, and so he, he, we, it was almost like reminiscing, you know, it was like the past. And he yeah. asked me, he asked me how things started with when you know, VOM relaunched as the Voice of the Martyrs because I was the marketing director, uh, the office manager, and then I went on to be a consultant for them. And like I said, I was at their offices. They do an amazing work, and they're excited about distributing iBible in the field and in the field where Christians are persecuted. So it's a great partnership. Well, let's go back just not too many years to 2016 now and talk about um, – well, well, how does did Revelation Media begin? Is that when you you launched Revelation Media in 2016? I did. I I didn't. I didn't want to start a ministry. Um, I was <laughs> I was working on. I know that's funny, right? Uh, that means it must have come from God, right? <laughs> I mean, I definitely fought, and uh, there was a couple reasons for that. I mean, one is I was looking towards slowing down in life. Um, I had good contacts and good projects I could work on. Two was I had a fairly severe speech impediment. And as somebody with a speech impediment, I definitely did not want to be in a position of doing interviews like I am right now. Uh, <laughs> that's another story. God, God healed me of that. And so I put out a fleece, you know, if God wanted me to start a nonprofit. I was working on the film, The Pilgrim's Progress. But originally, I had investors to the film. And originally, the film was just going to be commercial. We released in theaters. We did very well in a Fathom event, limited a limited theatrical release. 
And I actually thought I'd sell the film and, you know, hopefully make a little money. And I realized the Christian film industry at the time was very fractured and broken. And I also realized that good Christian films didn't go to the mission field. They tended to stay here. Hmm. And so it's like, well, what about the mission field? You know, they got the Jesus film. They got a couple of things here and there. How come they don't have all these Christian films? I think a new Christian film comes out in America every week. You know, how often does one come out available for the mission field and get translated into dozens or even hundreds of languages? So I prayed, put out a fleece, and then uh, God really led me to start a nonprofit. I still didn't want to lead it and put Pilgrim's Progress into the nonprofit and do work for the mission field. And then after a couple of years of trying to hire somebody and failing, um, my wife says, maybe you're supposed to do it. I'm like, honey, I can't. I got a speech impediment. I'll make a fool out of myself. It'll be embarrassing for the host. And I know you're kind of thinking like, I'm not stuttering now. So yeah. what's up with that, right? Um, but the very first interview I did, I uh, just thank God. I was prepared to make a fool out of myself. I said, nobody else will do it, so I'll do it. I tried to pay people, and nobody would take the job, which was just interesting. kind of, kind of yeah, it was kind of interesting and a little bit unbelievable. Yeah. So I said, hey, I'll do it. And I literally, I was on a cell phone doing a radio call, and I said, I'm about to make a fool out of myself. And the moment I started talking, God healed me. Wow. That's and amazing. My, my wife says I haven't shut up since. But um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I had to do interviews. I had to be a public person. I didn't want to be. Uh, I tried for years not to be. But mm -hmm. here I am. It's where God has brought me. It's just been one of the trials, one of the many trials in my life. And one of the many times God has proved faithful over and over again. Mm. Well, you, so you know, what, when you were sharing that, I couldn't think of others in the Bible that had either excuses or thought they couldn't do Moses and Gideon. And uh, didn't Gideon say, well, my tribe or my family is the least of all of them? And I mean, they're all thinking, well, we, I can't do the God. Find someone else. <laughs> yeah. I think I get scared somebody sometimes when somebody wants to be in leadership. Um, I think that's kind of I think Jesus kind of encouraged us to be careful what you ask for. You know, you remember it was John and James came to him and said, we want to sit at your left and right hand. And he said, can you can you bear the cup? You know, mm. and uh, my answer would be, no, I'm way too fragile. I'm way too human uh, to take on that responsibility. And so mm. I just take it a day at a time. And uh, it's been a long journey. It's been a challenging journey. But then God gave us this project to buy Bible, you know, that I know we're leading into talking to. And it's just Todd asked me, he said, you know, how did, was it, was it scary to start this project? And I said, I don't, I was just willing to be obedient. I don't think I knew what I was getting into. Hmm. And I don't know if I knew now what I would do because it became such a bigger project than I anticipated, but it also became so much more important than I thought it would be. And so those two things work hand in hand. So you're like, oh my God, this thing is just too big. But then you're like, oh, my God, this is just too important. It mm. has to be done. Someone has to do it. And I've yeah. always said, if somebody can do it better, I, I will help them. I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to know the best way to do this. I'm just claiming it needs to be done. I'm a voice yeah. saying, I'm a voice crying in the behind the camera saying, someone's got to do this. Mm. Someone's got to create a visual Bible. It's like, come on. It's like the printing press gets invented, and the very first thing printed on it is a Bible. Mm. Uh, Gutenberg, Gutenberg mm. Bible, yeah. uh, 1480s, 1450s, this controversy of when it actually happened. But now this mm. phone comes out, and we're the last people to the play. It's, a, it's mm. like, what? I mean, you version was first on the app. Congratulations. We love them. We're partnering with them. They do an amazing job. But when it comes to video content, why are we not first? Why, why are we not leading the charge to promote visual biblical content when we know the average youth in the uh, Africa, Asia, America, Europe is on this phone five to seven hours a day. Um, and so for me, it's more important to lead a charge. Um, I, I need people to be working on projects like this. And so my legacy is not even iBible. My legacy is saying, Let's wake up to the fact that we're not taking advantage to the greatest technology we've ever had in the history of mankind to yes. fulfill the mission. Yes, Sorry. I like no. I did. 
I like that focus uh, because if you go back to, I don't know, the 70s, 80s, let's just talk about the Christian music industry first. It took a while for the quality and the, the caliber of uh, everything that was being put out to catch up to the secular or the mainstream. And same thing with movies. And you made a very yeah. good point. There's a lot of wonderful Christian movies, a lot of them. But if you think about how they are used to share the gospel or are they evangelical, and you're going, well, maybe for the seeker in America, but not for global missions, right? Good right. point. You know, we also found out is that, I mean, I, I know you can produce a film that's faith-friendly. Right. So we hear these types of terms and we say or we use the term seeker, like you just said. I mean, we understand that. Or we say we can minister to people that are hurting. We can minister to these people. We have also discovered you can just present the gospel and people want to engage. Mm -hmm. uh, we put out kind of a very hard nine minute video, uh, I Bible episode called The Real Story of Jesus. And we only use Bible verses to create the script. And that thing is just blowing up around the world. People are watching it. And every seven people, uh, but every 11 people who watch it tell us they prayed to accept Christ at the end. And so there's no, there's no soft sell. I wow. mean, it's just the reality of the gospel. And so where I think this is a huge place to be kind of seeker friendly and to do crossover faith friendly films. I support that. This also a place just to use the gospel yes. and just to present the gospel because, you know, God's word says, my word will not return void, which we all know that verse. But the second part of it says it will accomplish what he pleases. Mm -hmm. It will accomplish his will when we distribute his word. And mm -hmm. that's what excites me. I mean, to see God's will accomplished. Amen, brother. Um, by the way, friends, we're talking with Steve Cleary, executive director of Revelation Media. I want to compliment you because this, this, what you said is so important. On uh, the iBible site, it says, unlike stories based on the Bible, the iBible script uses only scripture and contains no added dialogue, characters, or background stories, end quote. Now, whatever, friends, you think about The Chosen, um, most of it is obviously not biblical. It is made up. It is here. Let's 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 imagine what kind of conversation the disciples might have had on the road with Jesus or whatever. This is huge. What what they are doing here at Revelation Media and I Bible. Uh, Steve Cleary, we've got to take a brief pause to shout out to one of our sponsors. When we come back, we've got a lot more on Worldview Matters. Today's episode is brought to you by Freedom Project Academy. Take back your kids' education. FPA's fully accredited classical curriculum provides live, on-demand, and homeschool courses built on Judeo-Christian values. Request your information packet and save 10% on tuition by visiting freedomforschool.com. That's freedom, F-O-R, school.com. Hey, friends, if you know someone who might be interested in sponsoring Worldview Matters, please send us an email, worldviewmatters at fpeusa.org. We're very thankful for Freedom Project, for Harbinger's Daily, and for Pioneer Network. And uh, you, you can go to our website, worldviewmatters.tv. We're talking with Steve Cleary, Revelation Media, and uh, the, the website, revelationmedia.com, and also iBible. And that's what we want to focus on. Steve, what I said right before we took a pause, um, there's a lot of things you can imagine or add to the biblical narrative, and maybe they would have said this, or maybe Jesus would have done it this way, but we don't know unless it's in Scripture. Just your, your thoughts on that before we move on. Well, and, it, you know, you, you, you had mentioned The Chosen, and, uh, of course, I, I buy VeggieTales and Superbook and allegories for my grandkids. So there is a place for that, and, mm -hmm. I, w and I, w I would never say there's not but it's not in place so there's a place for it but it's not in place of the scripture and for us to take it one step further is we submit our scripts to a group of theologians and eventually to sil which is a sister ministry to wickliffe bible translators and they actually authenticate our scripts and so we are uh, approved as an authentic translation of the biblical narrative and i think i think uh I think there's some power in that. I think there's some power in sticking to the Word of God. 
And if, and if you if you read, it's very interesting to do. So go to the New Testament and read where they quoted the Old Testament, and you will see they often did a narrative of it. They often, I don't want to say they paraphrased it because I don't want to go too far off the meaning. They held to the scripture, but it wasn't scripture memor, uh, memorization. It wasn't, and they actually were usually quoting the the uh, Septuagint anyway, uh, than quoting the Tanakh because they spoke Greek. Um, but it's interesting that they they kind of get a, gave a narrative of scripture, and so they told they spoke in the story of scripture without leaving the actual Bible verses, and we're taking that same approach. Even Luke said when he wrote the Gospel of Luke, he says, I, I, I'm putting together a concise narrative of the events of Jesus. And so our goal is to put together a concise narrative of the story of the Bible, the entire biblical narrative. I want to go back to Revelation Media, the website, and I'm just so impressed with the quality of the animation. And I mean, look at that. It's just, it's just done so well. And I want to give you an opportunity to share about the Torchlighters. What is that? So Torchlighters is not uh, our project. It's a, it's a project we have partnered heavily on, and it's uh, brought to you by Vision Video. And it's a Heroes of the Faith series. So they take true stories of Christian missionaries, Christian martyrs, Christian heroes. They tell their story. It's geared towards children. It's a it's a very high quality 2D animation. A friend of mine produces it, and we definitely distribute it. We're going to be distributing it more on our app. We've helped raise money to produce it. We've helped raise uh, raise money for translations. Voice of the Martyrs has been very involved in that production as well. And so it's brought to you by Vision Video, and it's it's really one of the best done uh, series highlighting heroes of the faith and they're very very accurate stories. And I also want to mention the iBible app. I've got it on my phone. You can go to iBible. Is it iBible.com, Steve? No, it's. I'm sorry. It does get confusing. Go to i.bible. i.bible. So just replace com with Bible. And so it's i.bible. And you will see links. Uh, we uh, Actually, we're going to be updating those links. We are now, uh, as of yesterday, we're on the Android App Store. The challenge is we haven't had enough people download yet in 24 hours to show up on the on the uh, on the search results. So okay. if you search iBible, you don't see us. That will change in about two weeks as more and more people download the app. We've had about 75,000 people download the app, um, and that's just one way we distribute the material. I do encourage everybody go to the app, uh, find us on the Apple Store easily. It's uh, iBible by Revelation Media. You can find us on the App Store uh, or just go to i.bible to to get the links and use the app. And there's tons of resources in there. Everything is free. You get to watch the episodes. They're about seven minutes long. And then use the resources. If you're a parent, watch it with your kid. Just hmm. Use the discussion questions. If you're a Sunday school teacher, use our Sunday school resources. So there's a whole suite of resources tied to every episode. And none of it is of a denominational uh, background. It, it, it is just sticking with the scripture, and we'll let the parents and the teachers and the pastors figure out how to work it into their theology. Mm. So again, friends, I dot Bible. So the, some of the information I got, Steve, before we were going to do the podcast together, uh, was just really interesting as far as the numbers go. The estimated number of living languages, 7,000. Um, it says 3,866 written, and then the remaining 3,000 are oral only. Can you explain that? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the, the largest percentage of the population speaks languages we would know of. But if you want to reach all people, which the scripture, you know, clearly instructs us to do, if you want to go to every language, half of those languages, almost half, they're not written. They don't, they don't have a dictionary. Hmm. So you speak that language, but you don't read that language. And so that's kind of foreign to us in America. We think, you know, we speak English, we speak Spanish, uh, and we we read those same languages. But even in some of the Arabic dialects, you may speak Sudanese Arabic, but you're not going to go to a bookstore and buy a Sudanese Arabic book. And so this concept of uh, what language do you read? Do you read? Are you illiterate? Can you read? And does your language even support that? And so we have to have a strategy that has mm. visual and oral content tied to it. A written strategy 
uh, which is the most of what we've done to date will not fulfill the Great Commission. Hmm. That's a good point. It's a little sobering to, to think about um, the, the limitations when it comes to it. Because you said uh, actually in this information, the languages that the Jesus, Jesus film is available is 2000, languages with the New Testament, 1658, and languages with the complete Bible, only 736 out of an estimated 7,000. And I was also impressed with uh, the 80% of people are considered oral learners. So talk a little bit more, more about that, Steve, because that's the audience you're trying to reach. And I think you can reach them very effectively with iBible. I mean, it, all mission groups would agree that, you know, 70 to 80% of the world are oral learners. We kind of say oral learning is is kind of fundamental. It's not like, hey, these people over here read this, learn this way, and these people over here learn this way. From the time we're born, we all learn first by sight, and then we learn by hearing, and then we learn to read, and we learn into academia, and we learn by reading. So we believe in multi-sensory learning. If you promote material that is visual first, audio second, print third, you're able to reach everybody. You're able to reach everyone in the world. I saw a campaign recently to say, uh, let's give a Bible to every prisoner in America. And then I went to the uh, U.S. Department of Corrections website, and I said, how many prisoners are literate? How many of today's prisoners can actually comprehend a Bible? And that figure came out to about 40%. Wow. So I said, 40% of prisoners are literate enough to read and comprehend a Bible. Why is our strategy print? Why are we saying, let's have an audio strategy? Let's have a video strategy. So yeah. I, I think I think if we're going to reach the world, it's time to think different. Was it, you know, we've we've distributed in history six, seven million, uh, six, seven billion Bibles, and that's fantastic. Probably 99% of people who can read a Bible have access to one. Hmm. And probably 10% of people who who can't read have access to a Bible they can engage with. So the need is for visual and audio, but it doesn't represent masses of people. It represents masses of languages. And so is our goal to reach a number of people or is our goal to reach everybody? Hmm. We've done content for 500 people. I mean, we've done content in a language that only 500 people in the world speak. We get just as, as, we get just as excited about that as producing Portuguese and reaching tens of millions. Hmm. So I read somewhere, I don't remember where it was, I think it was on the website, where um, you're continuing to develop a, a lot of the iBible. Uh, explain to people how they can get involved and maybe support you guys, and I know this is going to be a long-term effort, correct? It is. So we, we've released to date 42 episodes, and, and, and you mentioned 280. That's our estimate. I actually think it's going to go to 300 uh, episodes. We, we won't know until we script the entire biblical narrative. Um, so we released 42 episodes that contains all that contains all of Genesis from creation to the death of Joseph. And now we're doing a harmonized gospels of the life of Christ. We estimate it to be about 40 episodes. We're making our episodes slightly shorter from feedback. We were kind of seven to nine minutes and now we're moving to five to seven minutes is a little bit better bite-sized chunks to do devotions and teachings. And so we estimate about nine years to complete it all, God willing, hmm. uh, the entire Bible. But the exciting news, David, is that we are doing translations and distribution all along the way. Currently, uh, the current iBible episodes are watched 500,000 times a month right now, and we're just getting started. And wow. so we released in five languages. We have two more in production. We have two more that are partially funded, Mandarin and Cantonese. We, I'm doing a pastor's conference in Madagascar where we believe the pastors will commit to every language on the island and the churches will actually partner with us in the translation. We're setting up a mobile recording studio in Uganda where we will go village to village doing translations and recordings, wow. which is kind of a Jesus film model, you know, there, and, and we work with them. We always gain wisdom and ideas from them. We got to use the technology to reach, to reach the lost. I mean, do we really need another 5,000 English Bibles before we reach people who have never had a Bible? And if you want to reach people who have never had a Bible, you're going to have to be visual or audio. Mm. That's, that's just a given. That's not an opinion. It's yeah. a fact. Yeah. Visual or audio. 
excellent point. I'm really so excited to see more people find out about this. I just want to make sure we're a nonprofit here. You're a nonprofit. People can support i.bible. And the, the bottom of the page, you can make a contribution and, you know, you can donate. Uh, guys, if that God puts it on your heart. But please go check out the website, both i.bible and revelationmedia.com. So, Steve, in the last two minutes or so here, um, just your closing thoughts on where you're at and uh, just the work ahead and just uh, anything you'd like to share about iBible. You know, we we definitely see this as a huge opportunity. And, and on the other side, it's a huge undertaking. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that excites me the most is every time we meet with somebody, they say, I can use this in my church. I can use this in my ministry. I can use this in my university. I can use this in my Christian school. And so iBible is for everyone. Um, to me, if like I want to just gift it back to the church, to the ministries, to everybody. We 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 do not charge for missionaries and pastors and teachers and parents to use the app. Um, it's a big need here. And so the first thing we ask for is for prayer. Mm. And please keep us in prayer. We often feel spiritual attacks working on the Word of God. And then two, look at the content and look at the resources and use it with your children. And I'm saying even teenage, college, uh, my son is 32. And when he watches episodes, he always asks me questions and gives me the ability to engage my son in the scripture, who I'm telling you is not going to read the Bible. And so at his age, everything he consumes is on his phone. And so I'm able to reach him where he's at. And then third, pray about helping us. You know, like you said, we're a nonprofit. We're 100% uh, supported by donations. Mm-hmm. Go to i.bible, consider making a donation, get on our email list, and and we'll keep you up to date every day on what we're doing. And uh, I just love one of the, the taglines there. Um, uh, where, where was it? A visual Bible for a visual and connected world. And by the way, guys, they're on Facebook, facebook.com slash the I Bible, and they've got a YouTube page as well, and that's Revelation Media. Uh, you've got a YouTube page, and Steve, uh, we just appreciate your time, all that you're doing. It's how exciting, and as you said, it's daunting. We know there's spiritual warfare and attacks going on, so friends, pray for Steve Cleary and uh, Revelation Media, I Bible. Lord willing, we'll uh, catch up with you again, Steve. God bless you. Thanks for your time. Thanks, David. I look forward to it. All right. Sounds good. Uh, So, friends, so many great projects out there, but this is such a unique uh, tool that can be used to reach people that either can't read or don't have the Bible in their language. So, i.bible. Thanks for tuning in, for sharing the podcast. God bless you. And as always, keep speaking the truth about things that matter.